YouTube, what's good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over the seamless transition. A lot of people have been asking for it. It was first popularized with the ASAP Forever music video. And I know a lot of people started doing the effect after that. The one that really caught my eye is the director called Walker Flocker. He's super underrated. He did it like crazy in this OG young Marco music video, Tambourine. He directed it and edited it. And uh, it just went absolutely insane in this video. You definitely need to go into the description, watch the video before you watch this tutorial. It has like, at the time I'm recording like 6,000 views, which is just absolutely criminal. Uh, I think it might be one of the most underrated music videos released right now. So definitely go watch that. Follow him on Instagram. This dude is actually like insane at editing. He's, everything's so detailed. There's parts in the music video that you wouldn't pick up unless you went frame by frame. Like he literally has like his logo in parts of the music video that are like directed for people like me going frame by frame and breaking down its effect. Like you, it actually shows up like two frames. You would not notice unless you were going frame by frame. I guarantee OG young Marco didn't see this stuff. And uh, honestly, most of you guys probably won't even see it either. So I'm not gonna be showing those because those are just kind of Easter eggs that he hid throughout the music video. So if you want, go dissect the video, watch it through, see how crazy this dude is actually editing and shooting videos. All right, now that you're back from watching the music video, uh, what we do here is a lot of music video tutorial breakdowns, effect breakdowns. I'm gonna do some behind the scene vlogs in LA, uh, just kind of showing the studio sessions, just working with artists, artist development. So if you're interested in any of the visually creative side of the hip hop scene, definitely be sure to subscribe. We're trying to get 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. I think it's definitely possible. And the way the channel's growing, it's definitely gonna happen. So if you have a friend that's interested, feel free to share it with them. If you haven't already liked and comment, Let's get this video to 500 likes, 100 comments. You guys have been killing it recently. If you want to support the channel even more, you can go over to briandelmata.com. Check out my ultimate paper texture pack. It helps you get those paper rip effects and transitions. It supports the channel as well as you get some really high quality digital assets. I'll have the website linked below as well as a playlist of tutorials that I have on that pack. I think there's already like 15, so there's definitely not a shortage of effects right off the bat. If you want to connect with me anymore or join the community, definitely join our Discord server. Follow me on Instagram. I'll have all the socials and stuff linked below. Yeah, that's enough talking. Let's get into the video, break down this effect because it's a crazy one. All right, so I'm gonna show you the one that Walker Flocker did, the one that I'm gonna be breaking down. There's like plenty of different ways you can do this transition with stitching. So if you're interested in any of those, definitely let me know. There's just some crazy transitions he does throughout this video. So here's the one that I'm gonna be breaking down. Just kind of zooms out. It goes through the train window. I'll show you what I've come up with recreating it before. I think it's pretty similar. It's just kind of hard to do when you have a uh, when you don't have the original footage, like I had to zoom in a lot more than he would have had to. If you have like raw footage or whatever, your actual own footage, it's definitely a lot easier, but we can make do what with what we got and uh, get something pretty similar. So what I'm gonna do is just split the clip where I kind of want the effect to take place, delete these layers, just so we can see this easier. Pushing B on my keyboard to bring the beginning there and then end to bring the end there, trim the comp so it's the same length. And then we're just gonna cut out his transition. So from like here, all the way to like here. We'll use this window as our transition. And then what I did is I just cut out his transition. And then the first thing we're gonna do is just go and click on the layer that you wanna be zooming, you wanna be zooming out of or into, I guess. So I'm gonna be masking out this window. So I'm just gonna use the pen tool and just mask around the edges. Better job you do, obviously, the better it's gonna sell the effect. I'm gonna do something pretty quick for the tutorial, but it shouldn't be that bad anyways. And then I'm gonna go to masks over here, click invert, and then click it on the layer, just tweaking a few things real quick and too crazy. You don't want the uh, the layer behind to be showing or like the color behind, so I just moved it out a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is go into masks, make the expansion, maybe something like five pixels, and then feather it like five as well. And then unmask, I'm going to go ahead and click the stopwatch. That's going to add a keyframe. And then I'm just going to go frame by frame and click on mask down here. And then you'll be able to drag the mask over. And I'm just going to hold shift so it doesn't change the height. It's only changing the horizontal instead of the vertical. It's a pretty steady shot. You might have to do both, but for me, I only have to change the horizontal. If you wanted to, you could also track the, uh, the mask depending on how long it takes. But for for this case, I'm just gonna do handheld. I don't think it's uh, that many frames anyways. And then we're just gonna play it through and see what that looks like, see if the mask looks good. For our case, it looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just feather a little bit more, maybe something like 12, see what that looks like. I think it looks a little bit better that way. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it like be super zoomed in and then start zooming out. So I'm basically just gonna go ahead and clip reverse on this clip. That way your clip's zooming out. It's just gonna be able to sell the effect a little bit better. It's not necessary. And then I'm gonna go like 10 frames to the right and then just drag your clip underneath. So now you should see the window pop up and kind of go past him. And since this frame was already moving, like in the original clip, he was going at the same speed as the train. So it wasn't moving. So it was easier to zoom out. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just click duplicate and then go to time freeze frame. And then I'm also just going to go make sure, go to the mask, 
go to the keyframes and delete everything besides the first keyframe. That way it's the same mask the whole entire time. Then I'm gonna also go 10 frames forward, drag it, and then cut it as well. So basically what I did is I just now have a still image of the train with the window and then it starts moving. And like I said, it's not necessary. It's all depending on your clip. If you were going at the same speed as a train at the beginning, then you wouldn't really need this because it's uh, already pretty stationary and it would look a little bit better. But for our case, since we don't have the raw footage, this is what we're working with. And since we do have that still image, I'm gonna actually go ahead and pre-comp these two layers here and just add it like train mask layer and name it that, go to the first frame. I was just like splitting it so I know where it starts. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this motion blur and go to transform in this layer. And this is really only if you do have a still frame. I'm just gonna add a little bit, I'm gonna like zoom into like 103 maybe, add the slightest bit of movement. That way it just doesn't look like a completely still frame. And then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all the keyframes, click F9, that's just gonna easy ease them. I didn't want it to change scale the whole entire time out. I only wanted it to uh, change position. So realistically, you only need the position keyframed. And now you can see you have a little bit of movement. It just makes it a little bit better. It's nothing too crazy. The next thing I'm gonna do is go inside that train mask layer, duplicate the layer with the freeze frame, go over to masks and delete it, and then go to transform, make the opacity something like 50. This is just gonna be easier for it to line up. So now you have something to, since there's something inside, you can line it up with the clip and keyframe the movement. You'll see in a second. I'm also gonna go ahead and do that to the moving one. But if you just have one layer, it doesn't matter. You can do it with uh, just the one layer. Now you can see it's like 50% opacity and now you can kind of see the clip behind. Then I'm gonna go over to our video clip, keyframe all of the stuff. Realistically, all you need to do is keyframe the position, but I'm gonna line up this dude's back of his leg with the right side of the train car here. So just go in every frame and just moving it so it lines up. And once the train car starts moving, you'll see why it's kind of important. So now you can see it, now it has like a spot to track off of. And honestly, since there's not much movement in the freeze frame one, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all the keyframes so that way there's no like any jitters. And then I'm just gonna go and move the last keyframe that way. And then if you want motion blur, just go ahead and click the motion blur layer. And depending on your sequence settings, it might be way too much. Like for example here, that is way too much. It wouldn't actually be that blurry on the train. So I just go to composition settings, advanced, and then you can change the shutter angle and the lower it is, the less it's gonna have. So I'm gonna add something very, very slight, like maybe like 30 for this composition. And that's why it's good to pre-comp because you can change the individual composition setting blur. I think that's pretty good. The next thing I'm gonna do is just highlight both of these clips, go to pre-compose and name this one the main one. So this is gonna be the overall clip. And then this one, this layer or pre-comp here, or the main comp now, I guess, is gonna be where it zooms out of. So I just found the frame where the window is in the middle. I think that's a good spot for it to finally be all the way zoomed out. I'm gonna go ahead and go to motion blur and 3D layer. Then I'm gonna go down here, click new, create a new camera object and click OK. Uh, make sure that your layer is a 3D object and the motion blur is enabled and this blue thing's enabled. If you don't see those, go to toggle switches and modes. Then what I'm gonna do is go to transform, find a frame where I want the transition to end. So I thought it was pretty cool to end right when the train car is pretty much in the center, or the window is in the center. Then I added all the keyframes, went to before the window even, and then I'm just gonna zoom in crazy. This is where having the default or the actual footage would come in handy because you'd be able to tweak it a lot more, but we're just working with what we got and I'm just showing you the concept. And you can see that here it kind of pops in out of nowhere. So I'm just gonna go back, zoom in a little bit more, have it down here, and then even just moving it over a bit. So then it just pop out of nowhere. And you can see that's already a pretty clean transition. There's definitely a harsh jump when the window pops up, but we can fix that easily and a few other things. You could easy use the keyframes. I think for right now it looks pretty good. But yeah, you can go into graph editor, make it look a lot more complex. And then I'm gonna go back into the main, go back into the track layer where the camera or where the window is 50% opaque. Go to the beginning keyframe it at zero. Go to the end of the, uh, the freeze frame and make it 50. And then go to the other one. If you have one clip, you don't have to do this. But if it's two clips, that's what I would do. And then I would just make sure that it starts off at what it ended at. And then I'm gonna go like one, two, three, four, like here. So like it goes to 100%. So then that way you will not see the footage anymore at that point and that way it's a lot more smooth you can see that it fades in then it's gone you can have it end earlier whatever you want and then i'm just going to go to the actual footage itself go to effects go to lumetri color and drag that onto your actual video clip and then i'm going to keyframe the tint you can obviously match it with whatever kind of footage you have but i'm going to keyframe the tint to match the green in the train car exact or kind of how walker flocker did uh so i'm going to go right before 
train starts coming in, I'm going to make it pretty damn green. And then you can see it matches pretty well. I'm going to even go into effects control. You can add a lot of stuff to blend it. It's all about how good you blend it. I'm going to use Gaussian blur. So just add a little bit of blurriness to here when it's when it's blending and just keyframe it to maybe like nothing crazy like six. It's just a little bit of extra blur to make it look good. I'm going to bump it up just a little bit more actually and move it, have it start in a little bit earlier too as it zooms out. And then now going back into the main layer. Once you get back into the main layer, you can see you have a pretty clean transition, seamless cut. Honestly, uh, just so many different creative possibilities. So I'm really interested to see what you guys come up with. If you didn't, definitely go watch the Walker Flocker video that he did, Tambourine. I'll have that link below as well as his Instagram. So follow him. Super, super underrated director. Definitely going to blow up this year. So uh, get him on your radar. Watch him. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video.